Today's video is brought to you by friend of the channel Skillshare. Now, I'm sure most of you know Skillshare, but if you don't, it's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. With Skillshare, you can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in your creativity. There are a ton of ways you can use Skillshare to better yourself, especially right now. You can take classes on creativity or productivity to help with your art, or drawing, writing, or journaling classes to help with a specific skill. Personally, I've been wanting to get better at Photoshop because I've really just learned everything for YouTube on the fly, so I'm interested in The Essential Training Course by Daniel Scott, who is a certified Adobe trainer. The good thing is, too, before you take a class, you can read comments, get a great idea of what you're signing up for, and it's much cheaper and more flexible than even just basic courses you'd get at a college or seminar. Anyway, if you're interested in Skillshare, they will be giving away two free months of premium membership to the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description box to help you explore your creativity. And then after that, it's only $10 a month. Again, link in the description. Thank you once again, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. Today, I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at the history and different types of capital ship weapons in the Star Wars universe. And this is really a topic that's kind of under discussed because for most of the four or 5,000 years that dominated Star Wars Legends continuity, we really only see a handful of weapon types, large turbo lasers for taking on other capital ships, smaller laser cannons typically, or blasters for targeting starfighters, then things like ion cannons, missiles, torpedoes, etc. So today we'll look at what came before and even after that. We'll also examining the general history of weapons development on a capital ship scale in the Star Wars Legends continuity. So let's get started. So because the name is super misleading, most people think that turbo lasers are actually laser based weapons. And that's not the case. A laser in the real world is basically focused light? Well, that's clearly not the case with turbo lasers and laser cannons in the Star Wars universe. Both of those technologies are generally based off blasters, like handheld weapons, created usually by Tabana gas and some sort of power source. So definitely not just amplified light like we'd understand a laser to be in the real world. However, the reason for the name can actually probably be understood through this examination of capital ship weapon types. And originally, capital ships did use actual lasers as we would understand them in the real world. The Essential Guide to Warfare actually says that the first capital ships used microwave lasers for offense. So it's probably just the case that as the weapons technically changed, the names nonetheless stuck. Alongside microwave lasers, early capital ships also used more standard weapons like torpedo launchers and guided missiles. However, where a weapon is designed, defenses will sprout up to counter it. And the evolution of capital ship weaponry can largely be traced to both natural defenses and the increasing capabilities of other capital ships. When talking about natural defenses, we have the fact that because of the thick atmosphere present on most planets, light-based weapons just couldn't do very much damage against ground targets, so things like orbital bombardments just weren't possible. This changed about 10,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, as the Kumari Empire started using battleships which employed mass driver cannons. This certainly isn't a novel science fiction idea, and essentially, they would fire large projectiles at extremely fast speeds. Now, capital ships could not only bombard planets traditionally, but could also bypass a common defensive measure present on other large ships, which was reflective armor plating. In response, important planets across the galaxy began developing their own anti-capital ship weaponry, including the first large-scale turbo lasers, and also particle cannons. Now, these wouldn't be immediately employed on capital ships just because of the much greater space, resources, and potential to generate energy on the ground, but all of that science would have eventually helped forward starship weaponry as well. It seems like mass drivers weren't the main weapon on capital ships for very long, even though the Republic and most likely other factions did incorporate the Kumari design. And by 8,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, and perhaps much earlier, 
earlier, the Republic was back to energy weapons. In 7800 BBY, the Republic fought a war against the Wayman Sea Storm. This conflict specifically helped the Republic further their energy weapons, largely due to increases in the efficiency of power generators, and at this point, common capital ship defenses against energy weapons which at this point had moved to ray shielding became much less effective. For a while, big turbo lasers became much, much more effective against everything else on the battlefield, and it was difficult for capital ships to protect themselves. In response, starfighters and very small capital ships had a bit of a golden age, and that most likely led to the development and furtherance of laser cannon technology. Now, the main difference between a turbo laser and a laser cannon is essentially scale, with laser cannons usually being smaller, less powerful, and more mobile. So if you want a comparison, Han and Luke in A New Hope use laser cannons to fight off the TIE fighters. The Death Star, on the other hand, had large turbo lasers on its surface for defense. And the distinction there is why a starfighter attack on the Death Star is much more feasible than a large capital ship attack. However, that general evolutionary period is from some assumptions made by me. Unfortunately, turbo lasers are really the focus of many of these source books which detail the history of warfare, including especially the essential guide to warfare, and we do know a little bit less about the evolution at least of other weapon types. But we know for example that ion cannons, which I haven't mentioned yet, are described as ancient, and themselves may have come from some other type of electromagnetic weapon. It is very possible that the great droid revolt of 4015 years before the Battle of Yavin helped further not only handheld ion cannon weaponry, but also ship based as well. Otherwise, we know that ion cannons, like turbo lasers, probably benefited quite significantly from technology generated as they were integrated into planetary defensive systems. That being said, some of these technologies would have been very old, and Zim the Despot, who existed 25,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, not only employed the defensive mirrored hulls, which I mentioned earlier, but also pulse cannons alongside what we would expect, including concussion missiles and torpedoes. My point in explaining this is just to show that most basics of modern weapon systems existed for a very long time in the Star Wars universe. Tens of thousands of years when talking about missiles and ion cannons, a little bit less when talking about turbo lasers. The reason why those in particular became popular among some of the other varieties that we've discussed, like mass driver weapons, microwave lasers, radiation-based weapons, and more, is basically because of what was available for defense and what was most benefited by technological increases in power generation especially. However, even in the modern Star Wars era, we do still see unique or divergent weapon types. On a smaller scale, we can look at, for example, the Hapens. The Hapens still use turbo lasers and ion cannons, however, their technology lagged behind in certain areas, specifically weapon firing speed. So Hapen battle dragons would generally have a sort of saucer that would spin, bringing fresh weapons to bear. More dramatically, we have something like a Mazer, which was a Chiss weapon, which was distinct from turbo lasers or blasters. It's not really clear how they're different than lasers, but they are at least somehow. The modern galaxy also saw the upscaling of major capital ship weapons, for example super lasers on ships like the Eclipse, or ion weapons on the Malevolence, and again that can largely be traced just to upscaled technology and better power generation. Because of the prevalence of particle shielding, mass drivers and other weapons would remain a distant second option on a ship's arsenal, except in the case of missiles and torpedoes. However, flak cannons for example were still sometimes used although primarily defensively. We also see during the Battle of Coruscant that the Providence uses some sort of projectile weapon, and this has always been a little bit strange to me. But guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this look at capital ship weapons throughout the eras. And once again, a special thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Before we leave though, I do have a hashtag ask get question of the day, which I'd like to get to. Today's question comes from Liam, who asks, do ships when exiting hyperspace just automatically decelerate? Is it an in-ship mechanism or does exiting hyperspace just slow the ship down? So in Legends at least, and I think in canon, this acceleration and deceleration is what's known as pseudo motion. This seems to be a natural phenomenon rather than something a ship's captain or pilot does purposefully. So that's a pretty interesting question with also a simple answer, and I hope you're happy with my explanation. But guys, that's all I have for today. Hope you guys have a great day, and as always, may the force be with you.